There are only two industries in Caratunk, Maine, population 100. The lumber mill down by the river and Walter York. Mr. York makes snowshoes. His son owns the mill. It's a time-honored and very necessary craft in this part of the nation. The winter snows pile up even higher than the sawdust in his workshop. Links of white ash are carefully cut and then precisely planed. There have to be thick areas and thin areas, placed according to the length and with mindful heed to the grain. In a couple of weeks, a hot fire in his old Atlantic stove will start the water boiling in his homemade steamer. The ash strips are then bent around dozens of Walter York designed forms, tightly wedged into place, and in a few days, they take on the form of snowshoes. My great grandfather made snowshoes. That's the nearest time. He was a he was an old time guide and hunter. And he did that's in the days when they had a lot of moose, caribou. And he made snowshoes. He'd shoot moose and take the hides. There's been books written about him. Moose hide, and later raw hide, was used for the lacings. Well, modern technology has crept into the snowshoe making business just a tiny bit. The strips of leather have been replaced by man-made neoprene. It works better and lasts longer. Other than that, they're just about the same. Walter should know. The people in the area call him the expert. It's a job. When you get on at night, if you put in the day in the shop, you get on at night, you've got something to show of something you've made with your hands, which I think is a, is a great thing for us. Snowshoes look a bit out of place in the green time of the year, but let a good old Maine winter settle in, and they begin to look like a pair of very trusted friends. Well, now I've got my hat, got my coat, Got my brand new pair of Walter York snowshoes. Now all I need is some snow. Outside of Caratunk, Maine, this is Andy Johnston. I wonder if Bigfoot started this way.